Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slam Lands, we're here in New York City with Hernan Rodriguez. We're going to talk about his photography. He does great fashion and celebrity photography. So let's get in and kind of dig into his life and see what we can do. So first off, Hernan, tell us your name, what you do, kind of your specialty, and just kind of that basic groundwork for us. Basic groundwork? Well, I'm Hernan Rodriguez, and uh, you know, living in, in, in L.A., well, you know how it is, California, Hollywood, it kind of dictates where you go with your photography. Because I used to live in, in, in the Inland Empire, and it was more family. So once I moved to the, to the city, it kind of changed my style of photography. Actually, your style stays the same, so that's true, but the influences of what you do with your work changes. So I ended up doing a lot of uh, actors, a lot of celebrity work, and uh, I just expanded from there. And that's you know pretty much a one-on-one. -on -one. You know I'm not so much shooting for magazines and publications, though they get published, but I, I specifically work with the talent, the agent, and the managers. And the, the, where the work ends up is you know who knows. You know it's 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 fun to see. That's fabulous. So so if you had to categorize your work, what would it be? I mean, what kind of work do you? I mean, yeah. that, no one likes doing that, but if you. Ha I, I, you know, it really comes down to portraiture. Mm -hmm. You know, I just love people. I love working with people, and it, does, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, most people look at my website. They're like, "Well, I can't work with you because they think I'm expensive or you do too much celebrity work." But it's not true. I just I shoot families. I love shooting one on one, and you know, it could be anything. You know, yeah. it could be an aspiring, you know, whatever. You know. So what got you started? What got you taking pictures? When did that start in your life? Yeah, it's so funny. I started as a graphic designer. I started working in the art industry. I, work, I, I started as an artist, actually. My dad was a painter. My dad was an illustrator uh, slash photographer. And uh, I guess just a passion for that. I grew up, you know, I was five years old drawing. You know, and my dad was always teaching me how to draw anatomical, uh, you know, precise images of a portrait. So that was really instilled in my, in my imprinted in my mind. So. Uh, I just, from there on, I just started working in graphic design. I worked as an art director and I would hire photographers. And through the trajectory of, of, of you know, this process, I, I, I thought I had a keener eye, you know? So I'm like, you know, I could do this myself. So, so. talk about that path when you started studying photography. I mean, where do you, where did you go to learn the things you needed to know? I mean, at that point, you're, you're past college and school and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, a lot of it really, really is, uh, I mean, now it's different. Now you got, you know, the internet and you got YouTube and you got all that. But back, I'm not too old, but back then, you know, I mean, it was all books and magazines, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was really getting out and talking. And, yeah, I took workshops and, you know, the passion-driven people thrive because of that reason, because you want to learn more. You want to get involved with your trade. You want to actually educate yourself. So you look wherever you can. So, you know, I talked to people. I had mentors. I worked with uh, Alfred and Fabris. The owner of Alfred and Fabris was Mike Teratola, who was the PPA uh, president at the time. So he took me under his wing oh, for fabulous. two years. And for me, that was the, the best education I could, money could buy because actually I was out. You know, I was driving an hour and a half. It was minimum wage. I was losing money every day. But on the long term, it was my investment, you know, that was an investment that I took to be able to be where I'm at a short period of time. So you've got an art background and it sounds like you got a really technical uh, influence. I mean, that's a pretty sure, good combination. Sure, that... sure. It, it was a fusion of, I mean, my work when people ask me, well, what's your style? You know, I mean, it's a fusion between art and photography. It really is. You know, photography, you're painting with light, art, you're painting with bristles and brushes and color. And when I shoot a portrait, you know, I, I kind of work, I bounce back and forth. If I'm shooting, you know, something for, for a, a portrait, I like to incorporate colors and a little bit of the fashion influence in that. And when I'm shooting vice versa, you know, something fashion, which is more edgy and, you know, aggressive uh, posing and lighting, I bring back, I tone it down. I bring back some of the classic elements of portraiture. Oh, uh, you know, and I try to keep a, you know, so it ended up being my style. Yeah, that's great. So when did you hit a point where you're going, okay, I'm not going to be a designer anymore. I'm going to be a photographer. I'm going to, I mean, is there a, did it just happen one day or was it a slow? You know, it's so funny you mentioned that. The actual, I was, my house went under construction in, in, in the valley. And it, under a, a three month period, somebody broke into my, my place, oh. took my, my, my computers. Oh. I had all my clients, my, my database for, for, you know, my design work, my, my production stuff. 
and I just kind of hit a crossroad in my life where do I pursue and reestablish, you know, whatever I've been doing. But by then, I already had the, the, the tick, you know, of photography. Yeah. So I jumped in full bore into photography. I, I, it's so funny because in photography, most photographers will say, well, I'm keeping my day job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you still got to make a living, but you still aspire to be a really good photographer. Yeah. In my experience, you can, you know, like you have to be 100% committed to this if you want to excel in this, you know? Yeah. And even for business, if you're not doing this 100%, then, you know, you're going to really shortchange yourself in the long run. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. there has to be a point where you just get in and do it. Otherwise, yeah. it's a hobby and it's fun. Absolutely. You know? And you always be a hobbyist. Yeah. yeah. Which is not a bad thing. I mean, if that's your path. Sure, but, sure, sure. But you're going to make it happen. Right. So someone steals all your, steals all your computers. And so you're going, well, I got to make a decision. Sure. <laughs> and it's great. That's a great story. Right, right. And my, my friend of mine, actually, this, you know, he calls me and says, Hernan, you know, he was a, a school photographer. You know, they, they did seniors, but they also did events and proms. Yeah. So my first gig was shooting a high school, a high school dance. <laughs> Imagine this. So, you know, it was, it was learning on the field, you know. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I went in and he saw how I interacted with people. And he offered me a full-time job at the place at Alfred and Fabris. You know, uh -huh. he's like, "Could you want to work here full-time?" And you know, school uh, school photography or senior portraiture was like a boot camp for me, because you're dealing with. And this is what I learned from from the owner. He's like, "If you show me to be your good senior portrait photographer and doing volume, I guarantee you'll be a good portrait photographer in any aspect of the industry." And it really didn't click because I'm like, well, I mean, I would rather be a fashion photographer and I would, I would want to do the big work. Yeah. But you can't get up here if you can't do this. So we were shooting 100 seniors in one day. In one day? In one day. And to be able to interact, I mean, seniors, you know, I mean, there's this apprehension, you know. Yeah. They're, I mean, that's they're probably their first professional yeah. photo shoot. The, the boys don't want to be there. It's not cool. You know, I play football. You know, it's yeah. like, come on, you, know, you, you want to give me a tuxedo? So it's not cool. So within seven minutes, you got to interact with the person, you got to break the eyes, you got to get a good pose, and it's got to be a sincere image, you know, it's got to be authentic. And after image after image after image, and then your lighting has to be precise. Yeah. So I, I learned in, in one season, I learned a lot. So any other, I mean, if you look at photography now, I mean, who are photographers that inspire you? Who are people that you, you think, wow, that's, that's incredible. You know, I grew up, I guess, since I was more in the commercial aspect and just looking at magazines and working for magazines. I mean, I love like Herb Ritz, you know, yeah, Matthew Rothstein and some of the, you know, I mean, you know, they have some of the classic stuff and they still come back and bounce back. Even Annie Leibovitz. I mean, I love her work because it's also kind of a fusion of art. You know, she's got a really strong artistic background, you know, and if you see her work and you study what she does, it really, you see a lot of art there, you know, and it's just classic. I mean, her, her, her work is very simplified, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm always constantly just drawing for me than art books. You know, I go back to my art books and I see some of the master painters, you know, Rubens and, and some of the Raphael and some of the, just the classic, even uh, Van Gogh, who was eccentric with color, you know, and, and, and Salvador Dali, you know, who was a Spanish artist, you know, who was very out of the box. I love his work. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was amazing to see. And, and, and now as a photographer, I look back and, and people say, well, where do you get your stuff from? It's again, it's an imprint because the more yeah. images you see and the more you look and you flip through and when you're shooting anything in, in portraiture or any photography or even video, all this comes naturally, you know? Yeah. And I, I look back and I'm like, well, it, it imprints even, you know, I look at Japanese fashion magazines, which are, are amazing. I mean, it's probably like a $30 magazine, but just the work and I don't even know who the artist is, yeah. you know, but I see and it's influenced my work. You know, I'm like, who's this person? You know, because I draw back and I remember the shot of this such, such a person, you know, who shot this just a beautiful red hat and just all this neutral background, you know? So, I mean, that's where I get my, my, draw my influence from. That's incredible. I love looking at illustration. I, I love sure. illustrators. I just think it's a fascinating world to kind of look at and, and artists as well. I, you know, it's, it's a fact. Sure, that's sure. incredible. So let's talk a little bit about your style. Let's talk about what uh, kind of the foundation of what makes your work. What okay. It is. Yeah, I think what, what I start first with my style, if I were to really convey what I do or what, you know, this is who I am, I think it would be just a personal, a personal frame. You know, whether it's fashion, and I'll explain that what, what exactly that is, you know, whether it's fashion, whether it's a portrait or any type of work, even a magazine, it's that interaction with the person. So even if I'm shoot, shooting a, a, a fashion shot, which is a full length shot, 
if I'm missing that, in, that, that personal interaction, even with a model, and sometimes they say, hey, we're professional models, you know, like we've been doing this for a long time, and they want to take the lead, you know, but if I sense that they're not sincere with that shot, for me, it's not valuable. It's not a value, valuable image. So everything is weighed on that personal interaction because even looking through a fashion magazine and it's a beautiful dress, but if the person is kind of like not there, then it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So I really start my, my I, I can make sure that everything has to have that personal touch. And I built all, the foundation of the photo shoot is based on that. And I like really the intimacy of a shot. You know, it's almost like a three quarter personal shot. So if you see a lot of my work, even a lot of celebrities, I photographed uh, Anderson Silva, you know, a professional world champion, Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson. And I could do a lot and create the ambience to be part of a supporting image, but I always tend to come up close to the person, too. even for a fashion shot, you know, and, and you know, and I'm hired for that. You know, I'm hired for my specific style because somebody comes with a beautiful couture dress and, you know, most fashion photographers would open up a full length image with so much happening and an architectural setup. And I'm hired because I go in and I create, you know, that intimate fashion shot for, for my client. So it's really a personal touch, you know, and I start building color. Like we were talking about color. Yeah. The color really supports the mood or the aesthetics of what I'm, I'm, I'm shooting. You know, whether it's a person, whether it's a dress, whether it's, you know, environmental. The color is always part because it gets, it gets the viewer to evoke. You know, it's, it's psychological a little bit because it's, it's creating a mood for, for my shot. So whether it's, you know, an amber or warm or yellow tones or something blue, which is something cooler, you know, which creates more of a, you know, kind of a mystery on my shot. I have color really dictate, you know, or support that intimacy of, of yeah. that shot. So it's a combination of, of both, I would say. So just in your process, what, it, what is it you do? Like, a, I, I just want to break down, uh, do, you, do you determine what dress they're going to bring? Do you determine where you're going to shoot? I mean, what, what's the first decision you make? I'm going to photograph someone. Help us see that journey, you know? Help yeah, us see exactly okay. how a shot comes together. Okay, that's, that's, that's a good point. When I shoot, whether, I mean, it doesn't matter what it's for, I always look at the end result. I start with the end. You know, most photographers will start, okay, you know, you got one, two, three, four, you got 10 steps along the process, and, let's, and we got the shot. I start backwards. Because, you know, I worked in, in, in print production, you know, and, I, and my thought was always, okay, you know, we need to see that this, this final image, you know, to see the, the completion and the success of the image, you know? So I always start backwards. I start where the, what the objective of the image is or the portrait, you know? You know, somebody might come in, oh, I want this to be a beautiful image for, you know, 24 by 36 for my home. Yeah. So I already know what kind of setup I'm gonna have. I know my gear. You know, I know the scenario, I know everything, you know, and I start, okay, let's do this. And what are you gonna wear? And what's the process? And where am I gonna shoot? And what's the environment of the shot? Do you shoot on location a lot? Or is a lot of it in the studio? Or, I mean, you have a home studio, I know. Yeah, I have a home studio. Mm -hmm. Single dad, I raised my two kids. I mean, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I converted my whole home. You know, I converted, I got like four studio locations in, inside my home. Uh -huh. And it worked because uh, and, you know, that's, a, that's a good antidote to give uh, photographers, aspiring photographers, because I'm asked a lot, like, could you be successful working? Can I be successful working from my home? You know, and, and, and I thought about that for a second. I almost got a, a you know, a, I sold a house and I was going to buy a storefront, you know? A lot of things have happened in the process. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to go in and shoot and work, make this happen from home. And, and, and you could do it. You know, if, 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 you, were, if you respect your work, and if you're really professional and, and, and technical about your work, you know, it's, it's a lot of elements, you know. If you respect that, then people will respect you. And, and in Hollywood, you know how it is. Sure. People, you shoot anywhere, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I were, you know, Helen Reddy, I shot Helen Reddy for, uh, she, she got a U.S. Postal Service stamp. You know, she's an icon and not many people get that. You're either president or, you know, or somebody else, a queen. And she was an icon in the music industry. so. You know, she was shooting her press images for, for magazines and they're like, well, where are we going to shoot her? You know, bring her to my home. You know, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. So yeah. they're used to that, you know. Yeah. You're, I'm always constantly changing color walls. You know, I'm painting. Like I, sh I photographed um, uh, Victor Ortiz, you know, for the Expendables. And he's young, he's edgy. He did Dancing with the Stars. He had a, you know, a nice black tuxedo. Mm -hmm. I painted a whole wall red just for him. It was all yeah, kind yeah, of your home. my home, home. Yeah. you know what I mean? It was all velvet red with touches of gold, you know, and uh -huh. it looked lush, you know what I mean? It looked, it looked glamorous, you know? So when you come in, it looked like, wow, this is cool. It looks like an art for an art magazine, you know? Yeah. And it was, it was great. He did the movie Southpaw, so I'm like, it, 
I'm always changing wall colors, you know? Yeah. Or, or Westcott, you know, I mean, Westcott supports me with a lot of their, their vintage backdrops, you know? And if you see it, it really, it happens, it, it depends what you do with the backdrop. Yeah. Because if you see it, you know, it's, it's vintage with a lot of detail, you know, and I've seen a lot of photographers use it with all the detail, you know, and it looks kind of busy. My style, again, is about the subject, it's about the portrait, the person has to really dominate that image. So I, I let my lenses do a lot of the compression, erase some of the background, you know, and knowing all these little aspects and nuances of, of a good portrait, you know, I could use a busy, complicated backdrop and just really minimize, you know, photography is about minimizing and taking away yeah. and, and drawing your, your subject forward. So, you know, I do everything, you know, I got, I got seamless. I love shooting with seamless backdrops, very just simple. Just white paper or blue you know, paper? I, or I use, or? you know, my two favorite two, uh, is, is white seamless because it really is simplified to just the subject and a gray seamless. Yeah. I love, I always go back to my gray seamless. And you see it all the time in magazines for celebrities, yeah. a Macy's ad. You can't go wrong with gray seamless, so you know? True, yeah. <laughs> Blow it out with a highlight, put a nice spotlight behind it, or colorize it with a gel. And it works all the time, you know? And it's so simple, you can modify four different ways, and, and, and it works. It works really well for me. So you just have, do you have racks on like one of the walls in your home that you can pull these seamless down? Or? You know, I got two stands, and I'm always, you know, putting either, I start with the seamless, a gray seamless or a white seamless, and I drape fabric over it, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, layer one, pull it down. We shot Eddie Griffin, at, and when you're shooting celebrities, you know, you sometimes have the luxury, but you most of the time don't, you know? They, 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 they got their car waiting outside, yeah. you know, give me half hour and give me five changes, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'll pre-light for, you know, two days, three days, yeah. and I'm like, okay, this is setup number one. We got a gray seamless, drape on another fabric, you know, sometimes I'll drape a black velvet backdrop plain black, as dark as you could get. And when you're working with, with uh, black velvet, it's about separation. Because everything's gonna go black and the contrast is what's gonna separate your subject. Yeah. So I'll put you know, an accent light and I'll double up. You know, I'll put you know, a, an accent light behind, then I'll put another spotlight from the same direction. So I got one light coming you know, for the face and you know, for the body, it's a nice strip box. Mm -hmm. So it creates a lot of dimension and it's within the same parameters of, of my, my seamless paper. So you've gone through, like someone's coming and you've like, here's my five setups and I pre-light each one and so I can just go one, two, three, four, five. Sure, sure, sure. So you, you're really, you're thinking about this, creating the images before they come and... and oh, you have to. Yeah. You know, if, if you don't, and if you don't do your homework in that process, if you don't feel comfortable about switching lights, uh, the client will know. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's apparent. And, and the more that that happens, the more nervous you get. And in an industry like we, you know, we're in LA, word gets out, you know? And if you're building up a network for business, it never is good, you know, to be ill-prepared, you know? It's preparation and opportunity. The, the intersection of uh, opportunity and, and preparation, you know, those two keys have to be there for you to do. So it's doing your homework. Yeah. So, I mean, your process is fascinating. We need to talk about your color process briefly, but just talk about some of the additive subtractive color. Just talk about that, that whole concept and... Sure, sure, sure. Not the whole concept. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, you know, we'll be here, for, we'll, be, we'll park here for an hour. Yeah. yeah. I work a lot with color, and I've been working a lot with uh, Joe uh, from Roscoe. You know, and it, it opens up a lot of, the technical opens up my creative. You know, the more you know technically, the more you could elaborate on your, your, your design and your, your creative approach. And I've been working a lot with additive and subtractive color. And what, ex what exactly is that? Well, subtractive color is just like mixing paints, you know, adding, you know, blue and yellow will give you green or red and yellow will give you orange. So when you're working in Photoshop, you know, you're still working with subtractive color because it's a paint program. You know, you're adding, you know, an overlay of blue on a yellow p image and you're getting some green tones. So a subtract additive color is the opposite, you know, because we're working in RGB, red, green, and blue. And the opposite colors of that are cyan, magenta, and yellow. So if I get a green, you know, a green color, a green filter on a, on a person, on an image, well, you need to create the opposite color. You I need to introduce the opposite, opposite color, which is magenta, to counterbalance and, and in a sense, neutralize the, the portrait of the image. So when I'm lighting a person, let's say with all green color, you know, whether it's a, a lens filter, which is green, like the matrix, or all my lights are green, well, I, if I put a, a neutralize a white balance with an 18% gray card, it's going to tell your, you know, your sensor, which is basically a computer, hey, listen, we're off with the green. Let's add magenta. Yeah. So in a sense, well, the, it's the additive uh, principle of color. 
And it's the opposite. It's not adding, but it's taking away color. You know, photography is always right. about the opposite. Yeah. So it's subtracting that green and it's introducing magenta. So whatever doesn't hit, whatever color is not hitting, that, that color is not hitting green, it's adding magenta. So the background's becoming more magenta. And it's great if you're shooting in, in, a, in a outdoors on location, you know, and you got maybe a lot of, uh, you know, forest color maybe, and it's kind of, you know, plain looking, a lot too much green. What's, if it introduces uh, magenta, it creates a, and it's not really eccentric where it's way off balance, you know? Yeah, you're just doing some subtle color Just subtle changes, color yeah. changes, you know? Mm -hmm. I tend to use a lot of blue, cyan filter. A lot of filtration on my color. So for the additive, which is adding filter to my lights, I use a cyan, a cyan color to all my lights. And this is my go-to for location. You know, I did a, a poster for Dodger Stadium. It was uh, t Talent Scout of the Year, International Talent Scout of the Year. And it was in Dodger Stadium, shot in front of, of the auditorium. It kind of looked simple with white light. So I put all my lights, actually it was just one light. It was a, a you know, an octobox with the blue filter, sign filter. So when I had that blue light to my subject and I neutralized that light, it's adding like a sepia tone, a yellow, amber, orange tone to, to the, the whole background. backdrop. Oh, yeah. So the more you could do these little details and be creative with color, you know, it has a lot of impact yeah. to your images. Well, let's, let's go on now to what, I mean, tell us the cameras you work on, a little bit of craft. I, I mean, tell us the cameras you shoot, tell us uh, lenses you love. I mean, uh... I shoot, you know, it's so funny. I shoot, I started working with Canon. I've been using Canon for, you know, 15 years. And, you know, I got the new Canon body, uh, which is for, you know, my upper, uh, upper echelon work, you know. Uh, but I use a lot of, you know, I, I bought a Nikon, the, the new D, uh, D800. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, most people's like, really? Yeah, yeah, we got Nikon, we got Canon, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, it's great, they're both great, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've been backing up my work with the, D, the D800. So it depends what I'm gonna use, you know? If I want just the, like the warm tones of skin, I gotta say, you know, I go with Canon, you know? I love what it produces for my skin tones. Yeah, it's very warm. It, and it's very warm and it's always, you know, it's always predictable and I know how it works, you know, and that's what I've been using. But sometimes when I wanna work with a lot of detail work, you know, or, or kind of blow up something like, you know, maybe a larger format. I know I have a little bit more of on, on, on that aspect of production. And I kind of go to it, you know, I'd say about 70% of my Canon and, you know, 30% is my Nikon. And I shoot a lot. I mean, I shoot with the whole line of, of uh, the Tamron lenses, you know. And I use my 7200 as my go-to and my 90 millimeter macro I lens. I saw the 90 millimeter on several of your images. So I mean, is that crazy? Most yeah, people, so it's... <laughs> Most people say, are you serious? You're shooting a macro lens for portraits? <laughs> a lot of my celebrity work is with the 90 millimeter macro. And the reason why is if I want to go in it with a nice detailed shot of the person and maybe their eyes, or if they're wearing something nice, even if you're shooting at, with, with 4,000 watts of light, you know? Yeah. And you're shooting at F22. And if I get really close to my subject, well, if it's a macro from the point of your lens to your subject, it begins to fall off on focus. So even if you're at f16, you know, it begins to erase a lot of the detail, but the clarity and the sharpness of the, the person's eyes is there. Yeah. Now, if I, shoot, if I go back 10 feet for a three-quarter shot, it's still sharp from head to toe, you know what I mean, from, from head to three-quarter, you know, which is my style. Yeah. So my macro is, is a go-to. That's incredible. And my 70 to 200, you yeah, know. Yeah, 70 to 200 is a beautiful I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know. I've been shooting, actually, I started shooting with the, the 35, uh -huh. The 1.8, yeah. and I was amazed what that does, <laughs> because you know the 7200 gives you the compression value mm -hmm. of getting all those planes of focus out of focus. The 45 1.8 keeps everything where it is, but all it does, it's that supports your image, but it blurs it. You know, you create yeah. bokeh yeah. where lights are coming in. You know, blurred background. You know, shooting at f2, but that information's there on on your you know in, environmental portrait. So. It's different than shooting a, a, a compression lens. That 35 is kind of kind of uh, not intuitive to your work because you're kind of in close. You know, it's kind of a different I, look. When I started, you know, <laughs> when I tested the, 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 these lens, the Tamron lenses, it kind of pulled me out of my comfort zone <laughs> because I mean, I did a whole fashion shoot with it, and it made me think outside of the box, mm -hmm. which is great for growth as a photographer, you know. Yeah. And sometimes just experimenting with different different equipment will, will diversify your work, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And the images I created with it was amazing. You know, we shot by a fish pond and there were koi fishes. And it really made me think of a story yeah. for, for, for a portrait. So now I could, you know, elaborate more on my, my work with, with those lenses. Yeah. So, I mean, that was great.
That's but yeah, I mean, up. that's that's pretty much what I do, you know, and I've gone. Strobes and LEDs, um, any strobe platform that you like or? I used to Dynalite, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Peter, I, I love Peter, man. Yeah, I me mean, too, Peter's great. Peter, Peter Dynalite, you know, he's been with me for, I've been with him for maybe eight years. And he's the nicest, genuine person, mm -hmm. but the equipment works, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, he can exactly. be the nicest guy, but you know. We're are you still, using the new Bajas? Are you using the Baja? Those? The Baja is what I go to. You know, I just love that thing because you run around with it. It's it's so portable. And it's a great. I mean, it's a compact, powerful strobe. Yep. But the funny thing is, I shot with the HyperSync uh -huh. recently. You know, I think I shot like at 800. My shutter speed at 800, like a, you know, f4 or something. It's just beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it was just boom, 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 boom. And in LA, where you kind of go too elaborate with the equipment and generators, hey, you go to somewhere in LA, just without a permit, pop that out, and it's 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 always you know precise and and, and uh, it's consistent, you know. Yeah. So I shoot with that. I shoot with the with the ring flash. You know, I like using ring flash a lot. Do you use it more as fill, or do you, you use it yeah, as a key I've light? I've never used it as a key light. Really? So it's always fill. Never used it as a key light. So I, I use it as a pop of film. So how do you get it down enough? I mean, you really got to get the power low. You know, I probably shoot at quarter power with the ring flash. Okay. And I'm at about 10 feet from my subject. Okay. But I'm always using from almost the same axis of my, my, my you know, most people use it on the lens. I never use it on my lens because I like the freedom. Uh -huh. So I, I, I put a little, a little tripod, a little stand above my lens or close to. It could be just adjacent to my lens. And I power that down to be at uh, 2.8 and a half or f4. So when I'm building up my uh, portrait, whether for, you know, a, 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 just a, a magazine or for fashion, I have a key light and, and maybe four fill lights. Four so, fill lights. Four fill lights. Yeah. You know, so in technical aspects, when you know you're shooting at, at F11, let's say, right? So it's a racial aspect. You know, you know yeah. that your key light has to be stronger than your fill lights. You know, so most people might put, okay, you know, I want a ratio of three to one, and I have, you know, my, my key lights at, at one F stop and one umbrella for my fill. Maybe one yeah. stop low, a stop and a half less. So they already know, you know, one less than, than the, the fill, I mean, in the key. I build four lights less than my key light. And it's a wraparound light, you know? So it gives you a nice, clear, like just a big open fill. A big open fill. That's so, nice. if, you know, if somebody's dressed and they have something nice or maybe a ring or maybe like the, like I'm saying, somebody has a Super Bowl ring. I have a ring flash close to that so Super Bowl ring, but that's that, you know, a, a little pop, just a kiss of light. Yeah. And a fill, since it's more of a specular light, understand that you have a specular quality of fill, opposed to just a, a sand umbrella. Yeah. That's gonna give you just like an open, soft kiss of light. So, you know, I got one specular fill, I got one open fill behind me, and I got maybe two smaller fills, you know, that's crossing. And the fill's never hitting my subject, but it's it's brushing, you know, yeah. it's crisscrossing, where it's just like a bay of light, never hitting. Almost like accent lights. Accent then. light, yeah. And, and it creates texture. You know, when you have black, most most photographers will light a black direct directional to to the uh, garment. It flattens. Black needs shadow, so if we see there's shadow coming in because yeah. the light's crossing. So my fill light's crossing and creating depth. That's great. But let's talk about business. How do you get your clients? What are the things you do to get clients? Uh, you know, I think the most important thing is really, like I'm saying, expanding the hub, you know, your, your hub, your network of, of who you work with, you know, your associates and your business people. So I think if, if, you know, early on when you're starting a business, you know, we want to build flyers, we want to pass yeah. out postcards. We, I haven't done that for maybe 10 years. It's all a strong referral base. But it didn't happen by accident. So I started working with a lot. You know, when you're starting now, you got to do a lot of free work. I mean, point of fact, you know, you might be working for free for a year, but you're showing the quality of work you could provide. And it's your preparation. Once they see what you're able to produce, people respect you, people give you work, and next thing you know, you could have a $10,000 account. So I'm working with a person who does a lot of sports uh, figures, you know, athletes. Yeah. That's one hub. You know, I get the NBA. And I get the, you know, your, your NFL players and, you know, anybody who's doing that type of stuff, you know, my boxers. So that's one hub. I'm, be, I'm getting another person and an associate who does nothing but boxers. You know, so when I leave here, that happens, you know. I get another one who's doing nothing but, you know, they have, a, uh, their clients are just senior, or not, I want to say senior, that sounds kind of bad, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they want to, you know, the, your, your, your industry people who have been around, you know, and the uh, actors for a long yeah. time, you know. Yeah. So just that one hub, who shoots nothing but, you know, uh, celebrities, you know, 40 plus, 
Now they have people here in, in, in New York who are doing Broadway posters. So they say, you know, we got a photographer in LA. So anytime they go to LA, now their clients are my clients. So it's really just building up and pinpointing. What do you want to do? If you want to do, you know, nothing but actors and, and Hollywood, or if you do want to do nothing but fashion, if you want to do nothing but senior portraiture, well, get established with, with, with one main, you know, uh, platform of, of, of a style of work. If it's boudoir, you know, it might be a person, you, you know, you're networking and, and, and being able to, you know, say, okay, you know, this person wants to do something, maybe the, the, the wife of an of a executive, you know? Let me start there. Do you have a rep? Uh, loosely, yeah. I got yeah. one in the, uh, in the Latin industry who uh -huh. shoot, uh, you know, they're celebrities and they shoot a lot of music and entertainers. And that's one, that's one person I have. And my California rep or the agent are just people who involve me in all the aspects of photography. Do they take a percentage of your... No, uh, so I don't get into the details of, okay, of the so rep full representation. Work to you or yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, they're just you know per people I know and established relationships over you know six ten years maybe. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Do you do any social media kinds of things to fuel that process? You know I do, and I'm b I'm bad with social. <laughs> I gotta be honest. You know I mean I should have like tens of thousands of people on social media. I really like just because if I spend so many hours and it works for people, you know. Yeah. But I did it for a moment and my numbers went up and I thought I spend more time, you know, like hey this is what I'm doing. Every play yeah. by play, and you know, look at the image. And when I think in two months, when I kind of stepped away from that, from the social media platform, I got more involved with with the individuals, and I got more business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it worked for me, where the social media was supporting, like when I need to get the word out, you know. And I'm here at the, you know, in New York at, at the Photo Plus, and you know, I get the word out. You know, make sure you have followers who fall, you know, who like to see what you're doing. Yeah. So that's important because everything's changing towards the direction of social media, but never lose the, the, the personal aspect. I mean, that, there's never so, no advice. substitute yeah. for that shoot. Yeah. So tell us how you run your business. Are you a sole proprietor, uh, S-Corp? Uh... No, no, I'm a sole, sole proprietor. Oh, yeah? Okay. yeah, because I went from advertising as a graphic designer, and then I went into the same the proprietorship I just added. I do photography now, so yeah. that's always worked for me. So do you do all your estimates then? When someone calls up and says, I need a shoot, do you send them a price quote? And You know, being involved in, 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 in the commercial aspect, I work with maybe three key people who work for, for magazines. There's a guy, Ron Jaffe, who did nothing in, in L.A., but, you know, working with high-end productions, you know? So you don't want to lowball yourself because yeah. they don't take you serious. You don't want to put yourself out of the arena going too high. So you might send an estimate, you know. We did something, uh, a beauty campaign for, uh, for a client in Japan. And it was a one day photo shoot, you know, for $10,000. And you know, well, $10,000 is a lot of money just for, you know, one photo shoot. But there's a lot of aspects, you know. I yeah. got, you know, three makeup artists and I got a production crew. And, you know, my assistants are coming in doing a lot of footwork for me. So I got my key team where I got, you know, my, man, my studio manager, Gary Perry, I work with him. So anytime anything's coming and filtering through the studio, I like, I'm a nice guy and I always say yes to everything. But what happens is, you know, we tend to be too nice and not good in business. This guy is a business person. Yeah, so does he do the estimates then? He does the estimates. Okay. You know, and he gets our, the, our production team involved. So if we're doing, like the beauty campaign was Angel Touch, which was a skin line. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he's looking for costumes and he's looking for vendors with Angel, you know, the Victoria's Secret. Yeah. Do we need to buy or we do, need, do we need to rent them? Mother Pluckers. Mother Pluckers! We know the owner. <laughs> Mother Pluckers. How'd so you know I, that? I've gotten stuff from them I'm forever. trying to get rid of six angel wings. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah. yeah. It was like I, I had yeah. my share of them, yeah, but they're my beautiful. My first experience there was the most bizarre thing. It was, it was feathers like, well, coming down the hall. Oh my I mean, gosh. I got Mother an Pluckers. allergy for four yeah. days. <laughs> nothing, no, you know, but, nothing intended. But Mother Pluckers, yeah. It was so cool. So, yeah, yeah it was, <laughs> hey, we're LA people. We know the same circles. Absolutely. So, you know, I have key players doing that you know so I have I work with Cindy you know who's also my right hand man which she's a woman yeah she wasn't a, a photographer but working with me you know for six seven years she knows exactly my thought process yeah so she gets my whole line of, of filters my modifiers so when I'm getting my projection set up I got I got you know Brooks Institute uh, graduates coming in with degrees and the girl was working at a cosmetic line who knows more about lighting. <laughs> it's hands on, well, you know? because you've taught her. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, this is what we need to do. These are the yeah. ratios and these are, so she's my key person who's running my, my key photographers. 
That's fabulous. Then I got my guys because I'm creative people are leaving lenses and dropping things. So, you know, so we have a team. We have a core team that we travel to Vegas and we go to, you know, we shot the Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield uh, reunion portraits. We took the whole truck. I mean, you know how it is, a yeah. production truck. Yeah. Take everything. Yeah. We use two lights. Yeah. I was like, son of a god, yeah, man. everything in the world there, right? We spent money on, on getting this production done and yeah. there were two lights. That's all we needed. <laughs> so who knew? Uh, but that's how it works, you know? So in your process, I mean, you're charging a, a fee, some kind of a usage fee. Uh, well, right. are you charging a usage fee? I guess that's the question. I mean, if a person is going to, you do a shoot for a certain purpose and they call like, hey, I really want to use this for another magazine or Right, whatever. right, right. How do you price that out? I mean, what's that pricing process like? Yeah, you always, you always have a usage fee. And you, you want to put a limitation on a time table on your, on your images because they need to, it's a business, you know? Yep. And we, we're creating, a, a, the image we're creating is art craft. It's like years of art center study, you know? So when you have an image, you know, it's passive income, you know what I mean? Somebody calls me down the line, I, I photographed Evander Holyfield, and somebody calls and say, hey, I need an image for a vitamin uh, line for him. Okay. Well, we did the photo shoot seven, six years ago. Yeah. But now, you know, it's like, well, you know, you got a, you, you got a one-time fee for it, you know? It's, you know, it's, I'm charging $4,000 for the image to be able to use it for just one label, you know, and that's it, just the label. That's or, fabulous. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a magazine, or you know, he had something at, at a, an auction house, and they were doing the cover of a magazine for him. You know? Yeah. So you got to see where you're at at what time. You know? And, you know, and sometimes the barter system works. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, right. it, you know, because you already know. Like I created the image, I made the money, but somebody has like all this stuff to offer to you. Like you know, how can I say no? Yeah. <laughs> like you know, give me a thousand dollars and just give me all this stuff. You know? So it really. You always have to, though, capitalize on this. In our work, there's always speculation work. You a lot of awards, a lot of prestigious awards. Photographer of the Year last year. Right, right, and, right. Uh, the Spider Award. Right. Yeah. I mean, what does that all mean to you? Is that? You know, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm no key, man. I'm no key. <laughs> I know you like, are. Listen, I'm, I am so humble. You know, I, I taught at a place in Mexico where nobody knew who I was, what I did. You know, and I was disrespected actually at a convention. People were like looking at me like, who's this guy? Who's this photographer? Well, when I was brought up to the platform, and you know, this is her, and he's won, you know, I won a Spider Award, a black and white Spider Award. There were like 60,000 entries, and I got the third in fashion, which was, you know, I was like, wow, I mean, you know. Yeah. And there was a lot of well, you know, world-renowned photographers who I beat out. These guys were shooting the cover of Vogue magazine and everything. So it feels good, but just in a sense of to see your work come to flourishion, you know? Mm -hmm. It's gratifying to say, hey, listen, I've been running, I've been training for six years as a marathon runner. I got to the finish line and I got third place. So that's the only reason why I do it. But it really has opened doors. Has because it? it really has. Because most people are like, do I do print competitions or what do I do? It really sends, sends a sense of accomplishment or, 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 or prestige for your work. Yeah. Because when they look at my curriculum and everything and all these awards, they think, I've been hired just for that alone. Yeah. Like this guy has won all these awards. You know, I, I think he's the one to go with, you know? That's fabulous. So I think, you know, that's the only reason why, you know, yeah. I'd say it would be. Well, it's yeah. fabulous. So just to wrap this up, just give me a sense of advice you give to uh, photographers getting started in the industry right now. The advice really is, and we talked about it, if this is what you want to do full time and this is your passion and you can't see yourself doing anything but this, you need to be here 100%. Yeah. You know, keep your day job for a moment, you know, and make the money, but make the money, set yourself, you got to set markers. You know, set yourself like, I need to be, and I said that for me, I, I want to be to be an elite, you know, portrait photographer or celebrity photographer. But, you know, it didn't happen in, in one year, you know, it took three years and four years and seven years. So that was my marker. But, you know, I went 100% into it. I quit my day job. I, I saturated myself with education. You know, I, I worked with mentors. You know, I took workshops if I needed to. And now I'm working with the, the VPs of all these companies. You know, I work with Roscoe and all their technical uh, advisors, you know. Hernan, you know, even now, they advise me on how to do, they do a lot of Broadway stage, like, okay, tweak this with color, do that. So I'm always educating myself. Never stop with your education. Yeah. Never stop learning. And I think perseverance is what I would say to any photographer because, you know, success is right around the corner. That's right. And we stop, you know, <laughs> we stop at, 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 you know, at, you know, you're running a marathon in mile number 25 and I can't do it, you know. Well, you got one more mile to go, stick it out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 
that's so fabulous. that's that's what I would say. Hey, well, thank you for taking the time to be here with me hey, and my to pleasure, share your man. life a little bit. And yeah, yeah. we'll have to catch up with you in Los Angeles uh, on a shoot. Yeah, yeah. And just do some behind the scenes of you working on a shoot. It'd be fabulous. Sure, sure. <laughs> so this has been JP Morgan here with Herman Rodriguez. It's been great to talk to him. Feel your process, feel yeah. your passion. It's been fabulous. So thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Thank you, man. And uh, we'll catch up with you next time. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. Awesome. It's November. Time for a new giveaway. We are giving away five of these SKB cases. They're worth $200 each. Go to thesidelens.com. Don't miss out. Don't forget to subscribe to The Slanted Lens. Like us on Facebook. Tell your mother about us. Tell your mother's mother about us. <laughs> this is too